as I said a couple of weeks ago, my New Year's resolution was to get closer to God. We can never be too close. And I decided to change up the messages and to swing it over to His grace. No PowerPoint today. So when we change it up, people have an expectancy of, well, we're going to see this, we're going to do that. So, I'm just going to preach to you straight from what the Lord has provided to me. And He wanted me to ask this question. What does it mean to be saved by grace? Wow. A lot of people may not truly, truly understand that. We've all heard this, saved by grace, but do we fully understand its meaning? Well, to be saved by grace really means that we are delivered from the righteous judgment of God. This is through no act or work by us but by his unmerited favor. I'm going to touch on the unmerited favor in a little bit. But first I want to kind of go back into the Old Testament where we learn in Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 through 17 where God gave us the law. And we have this, the law and grace. The law and grace. We can't keep the law. The law defines what we should or shouldn't do regarding loving God and loving man. And that can be found in Matthew chapter 22. And I'm going to reread Matthew 22 verses 37 to 40. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And second, it is, is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and all the prophets hung on these two commandments. First is very simple. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. Now we know we cannot keep the law because many of us have other loves that we put ahead of God. <clears throat> the law should really be like a mirror. When we're looking at it, we can look into it to reflect back how we are. It's for us to see how we are. And to break the law, if we know breaking the law is sin. In 1 John, Chapter 3, verse 4, it says, Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. So we know we can't keep it. Too many people strive to try and focus on it and to try and keep it. It's impossible. The only perfect one who was able to keep the law was Jesus. And unfortunately, we have all sinned against God. So we all deserve to be judged by God according to the law. Romans 3.23 says, For all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now the Bible tells us the wages of sin is, is death and separation from Him. And we can find that in Romans 6.23 where it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life if Christ Jesus our Savior. And in Isaiah 59, 2, it says, But your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. So we are under the righteous judgment of God because we are sinners. We are by nature children of wrath. In Ephesians 2, 3, it says, All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. 
Now at this point you're all wondering, so what does all this have to do with grace? I thought we were going to hear about grace. Well, how to set the stage? So here we go. Grace, on the other hand, is unmerited favor. During my last sermon, I did touch on unmerited favor, and I thought it would be a good idea to go over it again. I'm going to illustrate it in a way that we can possibly relate to what is unmerited favor. Now, you all know my good friend Bob Tonner. I'm going to use him in my illustration here. Let's say that I go over to Bob's house. And I saw that he got for a present a very expensive Rolex watch. And he's not into that. He just kind of kept it in the drawer. And I knew he had that watch. So I thought, I'm a little short on money. I'm going to steal that watch. Bob caught me, not stealing it, but he caught me trying to sell the watch to somebody. And he said, that's my watch. He caught me, and I was guilty of stealing. And because it was such an expensive watch, despite that, I thought he was a good friend. He called the cops and pressed charges, and I had to go to jail for a short time. Hmm. That's called justice. I got what I deserved. Let's look at it a different way. I go to Bob's house and I steal the watch. Again, he caught me, but he set me free. I, I was sorry for what I'd done, but he said, it's okay, you know, Give it back. He had mercy on me. So that was called mercy. Now here's the final scenario to look at. I go over to his house and I steal his watch. He caught me. But Bob not only set me free, he gave me the watch. I got what I did not deserve. I didn't deserve that watch. I got what I did not deserve. That is unmerited favor. Now to recap, in justice, we get what we deserve. In mercy, we didn't get what we deserve. In grace, we get what we do not deserve. We do not deserve to be saved. We're all sinners. We know we break the law, so we do not deserve it. But he covered it by his blood. So grace is getting from God what we do not deserve. We do not deserve forgiveness for our sins, but he gives it to us through Jesus. We do not deserve to go to heaven, but we were able to do that through Jesus who covered us with his blood. So to be saved by grace means that the judgment do us because of our sin against God. What sins are they? We know what they are. Lying, stealing, adultery, fornication, coveting, lust, etc. will not befall us. That is forgiveness. However, in addition to the forgiveness, we get what we do not deserve, and that is being in the presence of God forever in eternity. So let me just say it this way. The only way to be saved by grace is putting your trust in what Jesus did at the cross. He never sinned. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. But he bore our sin in his body. He bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. He paid the price. 
He satisfied the penalty of the law by dying on the cross. So when he went and died on that cross, he paid the price for past sins, current sins, and future sins. There's nothing we can do to change that. He covered us. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, it reads, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. We have to believe. We have to have faith. We have to have the understanding of what he did for us. There is nothing that we can do to make us better. Except look at them here. And see our reflection back. And realize, gee, he's covered us. The blood covered us. Continue on. For what I received I passed to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried and he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Because our righteous deeds are filthy rags before God. In Isaiah 64 and verse 6, it reads, All of us have become like one who is unclean. And all our neighbors act like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and the wind, our sins, sweep us away. So we have nothing pure to offer God. But He loves us. He covered us. Have that faith. <laughs> In Deuteronomy 17, verse 1, it says, Do not sacrifice to the Lord an ox or a sheep that has any defect or flaw in it, for that would be detestable to him. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. So the only thing left for us to do is to trust what Christ has done on the cross by faith. That is why the Bible tells us we are made right before God by faith. His unmerited favor. We have to just believe in that and trust in that. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, therefore, to be saved by grace means to be safe from the righteous judgment of God. We're safe. We're saved by grace. We're safe from that unrighteous judgment. By His unmerited favor, found only in the work of Jesus Christ. On the cross. Amen. Amen.